Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Monday, which means it's uh, traditionally a mishmash Monday. We'll see what's going on today. Uh, first thing I want to start off by talking about is our last video we spoke about disposing of razor blades and a couple of the comments, which I got to tell you, the comments on my videos are absolutely phenomenal. And I know a lot of you read through them and, and stuff. It's just, it's amazing how much information I pick up from the comments, you know. Um, it's like an education in itself. Every video, you know, you come up with great stories and tips and whatnot. So, uh, a couple people mentioned, they said, you know, how I get rid of my razor blades, I just stick them in the slot behind the medicine cabinet. And I was like, <laughs> the first time I was like, I, 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 it went over my head. The second time I was like, there's gotta be something to this. And then, uh, I looked it up. So check it out. Apparently the old medicine cabinets from years ago, and you could tell the old good ones because they came with those cool glass shelves that had, you know, when you looked at the glass sideways, you saw that green, that beautiful green tint of the glass. And they had a little slot in the uh, medicine cabinet. And that slot was meant to drop your razor blades in and they would basically fall behind the, the into the wall space. Now, I have uh, in my house, it's called balloon construction. Now, this was a, a rough thing and balloon construction years ago meant that they would take two by fours for the whole length of the house on the side and run them from the basement all the way up to the attic. There's no, nothing in between uh, those two by fours, you know, and later on because they balloon construction was kind of a fire hazard If you had a fire it would go right through the house They came up with the fire breaks or the uh, the cross members. That's part of code now But years ago when this house was built um, So in other words if I go in my attic, I can drop something from the attic or come right into the basement, you know which is great if you're running antenna wire, <laughs> but I can imagine if if they would have put that uh, medicine cabinet in my house, every time somebody dropped a razor blade, it would fall down here in the basement. <laughs> and um, But very interesting. Didn't know that. So thanks very much for telling me about that. And uh, and for today, I thought we would talk about something uh, else we talked about in the last few video. People thought that the uh, when we did the hatchet, uh, the Craftsman hatchet with the Hartwell vacuum cup handle, now, Hartwell has since been out of business. They were out of Memphis, Tennessee, but the people found that handle interesting. They said, I wonder if you could reproduce that handle. So I said, not only could we reproduce that handle, but maybe we could do handles that would be, you know, comparable in, in grip and, and style. So let's see what we could come okay, up with. Okay, so this is the Hartwell handle that we were talking about. And um, now, if you wanted to reproduce this type of handle or duplicate it, you got on this, you, it, here's, we're going to take a look at the handle. Now, you could see they did uh, three rows, okay, one, two, three, on both sides. They didn't do any on the front and on the back of the handle, so, and uh, it was basically in a kind of a countersink they would use, but they used a special one, and you could see here, there was, that countersink isn't a point, it had a different kind of tip on it, but they also did uh, 12 on each side, there's 12 on each side, so that's if you wanted to reproduce that one, but let's now, see, one day I was on one of my walks, and somebody had thrown out a bunch of these, and it's basically two feet long, by, and they're, they're basically two by fours that somebody ripped down the middle. And I grabbed these because I said, these are great for the lathe, you know, especially for practice and whatnot. Now they have knots and things like that in it. You know, they weren't uh, perfect, but for what we're going to do to, to, uh, experiment, this is what you want. So we're going to cut this in half, make two 12 inch pieces and go okay, to the lathe. Welcome to the Nova lathe. Uh, this is, uh, for those of you new to the show, this is one of my favorite uh, tools in the shop next to the dake. And because my mom, actually, she went to, uh, she used to like to go to Atlantic City and things like that. And one time she went and she won a lot of money. And I, she knew I was saving up for this lathe. lathe and, and this thing was like $2,000. They're not cheap. And uh, she won and she came home and she said, here's $1,000. Go buy yourself that lathe because I need it. I needed like a thousand dollars left and she said go get yourself that lathe and I, I didn't want to take it but she insisted and I was like oh you know something this thing means a lot to me for that sentimental value now we're gonna have to uh turn these are the two pieces we cut in half we're gonna turn these between centers I'll show you okay that. when you turn something between centers uh you're gonna have this is the head stock this is that's this is what turns that has the power to it and that will usually have uh some kind of uh, splines to something to grip the wood so this will go in here 
and make sure there's no dirt in here. And then this just puts in there. That's it. That's a Morse taper fit. And now this is the tail stock over here. Now, again, there's nothing in here. It's empty, but we're going to take a, this is called a live center. They call it live because it spins and uh, make sure there's no dust in here. And we'll put that there. Now you have two points here between the tail stock and the head stock. We're just going to draw two lines here and put a little, you see that little dimple we put in there with a, with a uh, punch. And then you're going to line that up like this and then put it into the head. Now stock. we're going to make sure that point goes into this little hole there. And we're going to slide this over like this. And there we go. It's lined up in that hole. And then what we're going to do is lock down the tail stock. See, we lock down the tail stock here with the little lock. And then we're going to turn this like this and tighten it up until that becomes very tight. So now this is solid between the two points. That's turning between. Seven. Now we put our tool rest on here and this is where we're going to rest our tool to round this out, rough it out. And the first thing you want to do is you give it a spin by hand, make sure it don't touch anything, then put it on at a low speed. You can see it's spinning fairly true, but uh, again, it's, it's not a great piece of wood. And then we're going to try and rough this out into a round shape. Okay, now we have this blank roughed out to approximate size of a hammer handle and stuff, but now it's roughed out. Again, we, you know, the pine always has a little bit of tear out, as you can see, and there's obviously knots in here, but we want to experiment with the two ends like they were handles. So the first thing I want to show you is uh, years ago, they used to do something called a beaded texture, and uh, they would put lines in it that would help with grip too. So we're going to try that on this side here. So first we're gonna smooth this out, sand it down a little bit, and then go into the beaded section. Now for this side, what we're going to do is we're going to mark down uh, five markings here with a pencil. This is always fun to do on a lathe. You just rest it here and touch it and approximate your distance or you could measure it. But we're going to do it with just uh, eyeballing it. We have it set to a slow speed um, and we'll start about here. Let's see one, two, three four, five. Isn't that fun? You could do is just using a pencil. That's a, it's one of the fun things. Okay, I'm now what we did was we marked out here uh, approximately. We just did every other hole. We gridded it out on here and we're going to use a five fluted. I bought this when I was about 15 years old. One of the first real tools I bought this countersink. I bought it U.S. General in Long Island, no longer there. So we're going to do this and we're going to countersink it down. Now, the, getting the depth right is going to be difficult, but we'll see what now, we can do. Now, here are four different uh, countersunk depths that you could see here. And you could see here it's done with the same bit, just going down a little bit further each time. And the important thing to remember is if you want to repeat this, all you have to do is hold this down like this and then lock down your, your lock on the side of the drill press and that will be repetitive. And then each one of these you can repeat as many times as you want. Now this is a homemade V-block. What happened was I had two scraps of wood. I must have been cutting something off. So I put it onto, I glued them to a piece of wood here and that makes a nice V-block to hold round stock in here that you can hold it and it won't wobble on the drill press. Now I'm going to lower this down until I, I'm going to do one and when I get it to the right depth where I like it, I'm going to adjust my depth stop here to lock it down like whatever it is so it can't go any further. That's one of your best tools here is this depth stop. Okay, we like it to here. So now we bring this down to where we, you know, where it is. We bring our lock down. 
Now it's locked down. It can't go any further than this. And that's all we have to do. We just drill the rest of the holes. Now I want to show you something pretty interesting. We put it back on the lathe to sand off the pencil marks. But um, and now we're just going to run it through some of the sanding screen. This is called sanding screen. Uh, woodwork has been using this for years. It doesn't clog up like regular sandpaper. And what's really interesting is, watch when I turn the lathe on and I hold it like this and I put the extractor, the dust extractor on. Watch the sawdust get sucked right into the dust extractor. I always thought that was pretty interesting. You know, one of my favorite antique stores is in New Milford, Connecticut. It's called Justin Antiques. A uh, real nice guy runs it in there. If you want to go in, say hello. Tell him you saw it on Scoutcrafters channel. He knows who I am. I go in there all the time. I always walk out with something crazy. But this here, a full can. This is a brand new can of uh, windshield uh, spray deicer. And this stuff, uh, you know, I, you use it once in a while. But I mean, it's just I love the old can and the old time find. You can tell this an old can. There's no barcode. And also you could see it was made in Pennsylvania which you know i'm sure a lot of uh are not there anymore but uh i just i just like this old time cans and, and these things a de-icer really works if you ever need it you know in an emergency if you get a, a lock or something that gets frozen you'll you'll wish you had this now you know my favorite part remember what this project looked like before we started hey we're calling this project done this was just a little bit of fun to see how to uh if we could recreate that, and I think we did a pretty decent job of recreating that uh, pattern. You can make it smaller, you can put more in, less. It's all up to your, you know, what you'd like to do. And uh, again, we did on this scrap piece of uh, of pine here. And uh, this is now the other embellishment that you could do. You know, you a lot of people used to you do this by themselves with a pocket knife or something. But you could see. That looks pretty good, like that on the bottom of a hammer handle or a chisel handle. You could do something like that. One thing I always like to notice is that even these, uh, look at the grain pattern in this wood, right? It's 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 pretty wild considering it's just a piece of drone out 2x4. So I always find that, especially the way the stain takes, how the stain will absorb in some. And, you know, even a scrap piece of wood you can find beauty in. So uh, this was a fun project, but you can definitely, if you don't, obviously Hartwell's not in business anymore, but if you want one of these vacuum cup handles, you could do it yourself. Okay, so in closing, I hope you have a great week. Thanks very much for tuning in. Take care now. Bye-bye.